The illegal wildlife trade is one of the biggest threats to global biodiversity. And of course, the illegal trade is far more than the charismatic, famous species such as elephants, rhinoceros and tiger. Every year, thousands of species of plant and animal are traded illegally. And the vast majority of this trade originates from or transits through biodiversity hotspots such as here in Cambodia and the cardamom rainforest landscape. In the mid-2000s, Wildlife Alliance partnered with the Cambodian government to create the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team, a unique multi-jurisdictional force targeted to crack down on the illegal wildlife trade here in Cambodia. And the results have been spectacular. In comparison with other countries in the region, the open markets are legally selling wildlife products and much declined in Cambodia. However, the success of this work created a new problem. What to do with animals confiscated from the illegal wildlife trade? As a result of the success of the work of the Wildlife Rapid Rescue Team, thousands of live animals were confiscated every year. Animals such as this red-breasted parakeet. And that creates a conundrum. What can we do with these animals and how can we ensure resources are in place to ensure they benefit conservation and don't spend the rest of their lives in a cage or risk being laundered back into the illegal wildlife trade. And this subject is a result, is a focus of our recent Practitioner's Perspective piece in the Journal of Applied Ecology. Wildlife Alliance developed a series of protocols as to how to deal with these live confiscated animals. We are here in the cardamom rainforest landscape in our wildlife release station, where species such as this globally near-threatened great hornbill are rehabilitated to be released into the extensive forest of this landscape. And our paper details how this process can be done, but more importantly, raises a critical conservation issue of ensuring that sufficient resources are allocated for dealing with live animals confiscated from the illegal trade. As illegal wildlife trade becomes a bigger and bigger conservation issue and more funding and more political will is put into combating it, more and more animals will be confiscated as a result of more and more effective law enforcement. And unless the conservation community and governments can develop clear protocols and ensure sufficient resources are in place to ensure that animals such as this great hornbill that was confiscated as a chick from an illegal wildlife trader are able to be rehabilitated and released back into the forest and do not risk being laundered back into wildlife trade. Unless this happens, a lot of the investment in combating wildlife trafficking may be ineffective. And this is a clear conservation message in our recent piece in Journal of Applied Ecology.